When was the last time you took a leap of faith, trusting that everything is going to work out? Do you crave growth, or are you merely content with the status quo? If you want more out of your life, out of your career, and out of your relationships, you are in the right place. Take the leap and discover how to create a life by design rather than living it by default. Real success starts with you. Now here's your host, Colleen Biggs. All right. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to another episode of Take the Leap. I am your host, Colleen Biggs, and thank you so much for all of you out there. I am so blessed to be able to have had this uh, radio, live radio show and podcast for almost five years now. And all of our loyal listeners have brought us up to the top 1% of global podcasts. And we can't thank you enough for your loyalty um, and being here. And you know, week after week, we're going to bring you some amazing guests um, that are going to share tips for you to grow your business, for you to design the life that you desire to live. Remember, life is going to happen every single day. It's either going to happen for you or it's going to happen to you at your choice. You get to wake up every day with that choice. And today we're going to be diving into overcoming barriers because we all have them. And I'm sure we've touched on something similar to this in, you know, the past hundred and some episodes. But I will tell you that you haven't heard it from Elle Ballard. She's here today and she's going to talk us through overcoming barriers. But before we get to Elle, I must thank our sponsor of today's show, Beyond Basil Mobile Pizzeria. Imagine if your wedding and private event was catered by a luxurious trailer that's equipped with wholesome ingredients and lots of TLC and, of course, a pizza oven imported from Italy. Our goal at Beyond Basil is to make the best pizza you have ever had. We know how to do this, too. Your best pizza experience is our highest priority. Be sure to contact us on Instagram at Beyond Basil Pizza or on online at beyondbasilmobilepizzeria.com. It's easy to plan your next event with us. We've got you covered. Thank you, Beyond Basil, for being the sponsor of today's show. All right, let's get to Elle. She is a huge supporter of women in business, a life and an abundance mentor. That's how her and I connected. She's the founder of Women of the World Network, the creator of the Fabulous You, signature transformational program that she created. She helps women overcome cultural and personal barriers while helping them uncover and focus on their uniqueness. Elle's successful marketing communication and product sales experience coupled with her international business experience makes her approach to business unique and powerful. She's been featured as a guest on the following podcast, Expand Your Fempire, The Art of Feminine Marketing, Voice of America, and others. Elle enjoys ballroom dancing, which I know she's working on a goal for that right now. We will talk about that for sure. Traveling and studies, longevity, and holistic health. Elle, welcome to the show. Hi, hi, Colleen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited. You all have to jump. Yes, you've got to jump over to my Facebook page right now because Elle has the most luxurious background I have ever seen anyone (laughs) have on Zoom. And I've been doing this for 10 years on Zoom. She has the most elegant background. You have to come to my Facebook page, Colleen Biggs. There's a picture of me kicking uh, because I have a bad attitude. That's what that represents. Uh, No, no, kind of a fun, bad attitude. And then be my friend. You'll be able to get way, you know, more videos. You'll get to see all my grandkids, you know, my life. Uh, But you get to see the beautiful Elle Ballard today and her gorgeous background. She just looks so elegant sitting here today. And of course, if you're listening um, on the podcast, you can always become friends, you know, with us on Facebook. So we invite you over there. L, supporter of women. What what drove you? Because someone asked me one time, have you always been a huge supporter of women? And I laughed and they just kind of looked at me like, what's so funny? And I said, no, I never even had women like friends. I really didn't like hanging out with women because they were super mean to me, you know, in corporate America had a hard time. So when did you I know my story, but when did you become a supporter of women in business? When did that happen for you? Where were you and what was, you know, happened in your life? Great question. I love it. Um, you know, I think it happened in stages and I think it's it didn't happen like one minute. Everything suddenly 
kicked. I think it happened in stages, everything from like being in my culture, uh, living uh, and, and doing what I was doing, um, working for corporate, um, for big uh, corporation, and then uh, moving into a different company and then moving into business school. I think along, uh, along the lines, just my experience, me being a woman, me as being a woman from a different culture, Mm-hmm. Uh, with with um, a little bit different traditional uh, settings and where I grew up in, um, and then really building a life for myself as I see it helped, you know, really um, kick that forward. And then when I started, I started my own business when I was like in my early 20s. That was the very first business that I had, uh, which was on a side like a side gig that I had. And I loved, I loved being just working for myself. I just loved these decisions and being creative and just do whatever I want to do with it. And so I told myself after that experience, I told myself at some point I want to do that again in my life. Mm -hmm. And so I think all of this experience brought me and then realizing also that, and I myself did that to myself. When I said that I want to open my business, I kept postponing it. Mm-hmm. I kept postponing it. I found, I kept finding reasons why it's, this is not the time. And I think a lot of women and uh, what I see do that, mm-hmm. that habit as well. And with all those things and um, nothing against men, but I think we do, you know, we, we network, we work, we, we build relationships differently. Of course we do. It my goal yeah, I made it my goal to focus on uh, helping and supporting women. Yeah. Um, so let's go back to your culture because someone that's just listening to you can tell you have an accent. So you talked about your culture and growing up in your culture. So let's talk about that. Yeah. So I grew, I was born in Kazakhstan and I grew up, um, I, well, I was born in USSR where Kazakhstan was part of the USSR. Mm-hmm. Let's start there. Um, and then um, in uh, when I was finishing high school, the USSR collapsed. And maybe some of the listeners know the part of the story. And then all the countries uh, became independent. And so I was from the country, um, Kazakhstan. Now it's a separate country. And um, that's where I grew up. And that's um, my native language is Russian. And uh, I came here 20 years ago. And uh, yeah, sort of uh, rebuilding myself and kind of uh, building my life for myself as I see it. Yeah. But uh, there are so many different pieces in our, my life that led me to where I am today. It's so interesting. So a lot, it's a big oh, difference in a- growing a business living in California today than it would be growing a business in Kazakhstan. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. assuming. Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and those cultural differences. So what are you finding? Because I know that you work with women in overcoming cultural differences. Mm-hmm. Do you find that a lot of women of different cultures are attracted to you because of that. And you tend to attract them to your programs and to your uh, women of the world network because of um, your struggles that you've had culturally. I think um, because we can relate to each other's story. Yeah. Uh, somebody can hear my accent and can relate because they speak with an accent. Um, somebody who, had um who was a single mom and uh you know um taking care of the baby and working full time can relate to my story mm-hmm. somebody who had to completely 180 degree turn their life around because she had this pivotal moment where she had this big aha moment uh that she is in control and she needs to change mm-hmm. this is up to her can relate to me um all those you know, all those different kinds of things. And, um, and, you know, it's, it's cultural. Yes. But it's also, I think the each, each of our upbringings as well, there is family yeah. things that shape us. There is society that is program, there's programming that shapes us. And sometimes it's it not, necessarily, it's not necessarily working in the life today. And so, mm-hmm. but often we don't realize that those beliefs or understandings hold us, might hold us back. Yeah. Yeah. So in working with the women that you're working with, uh, what are some of the personal barriers that you find? um, You talked about, you touched on one a little earlier, which was about women saying someday, someday I'm going to start that business. And, 
And in my opinion, I think it's because the way we are and the way we you said we we network differently, we build relationships differently. It's in our DNA. It's it's who we are as women. Right. Yeah. It's it's how we were created. And with that, we have this nurturing side of us and this nurturing side of us. For some reason, all women have decided that that means you take care of everybody else first and everyone else's needs go first. And yes. I, I did the same thing raising my children. Mm-hmm. And why I, I think I'm so successful today is because I'm not raising little children. I don't have all these other things going on and I'm able to really just focus, you know, on our businesses. And then I prioritize my time with my grandkids and my kids and family time and that type of thing. But I don't have them with me 24 hours a day. And when I watch my grandkids for a week, it's kind of a disaster trying to run my business. And so I don't admire anyone trying to do that. But I'm assuming some of those are the personal barriers and most of them are made up, right? We're making them up in our heads. So talk, talk us through that, Elle, because you work with women every day going through this. Yeah, I think the big word that comes first to my mind right away is belief. I think the self-limiting beliefs that we yeah. might carry. And there is, somebody said, um, you know, when when um, there was there was a if you compare men, if they are running for a position or promotion, they believe in themselves over what they're capable of. And I don't remember the exact percentage. Oh, I remember I gave that. You, do you know, back in 2019, when I first started my first uh, community called uh, Lead Up for Women, I gave this statistic in New York at the very first luncheon and 85 percent of men uh, will apply for a job that they're not qualified for and ask for a salary yeah. raise. Yes. You know, 15 percent of women do. Yes. 15. They won't apply. Yeah. I think 15 will apply if they're not qualified. Uh huh. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy numbers. So crazy. So men do it. They over, they go overboard. They add <laughs> on and everything. We, and we go under. <laughs> we it's underestimate. A, yeah. It's in our DNA. Yes. Yeah, totally. I think that's, that's, you know, coupled with that perfectionism and, you know, we have to have everything perfectly set up b- before um, you have, a, I have to have enough money for me was um, I couldn't, um, I couldn't leave my corporate because I, um, my daughter was going to college. I didn't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. And I was telling myself, okay, maybe I'll wait another 12 months and then I'll do this, 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 you know? And so um, I think it's just all of those and perfectionism, of course, no, never helps anybody yeah. and trying to be this perfect uh, to maybe hide some of the things that we are not comfortable yet, not confident about, right? Mm-hmm. And that is something I learned also for myself too. And then as, as the more I was postponing it, of course, I mean, now looking back, um, I like to say, just start, just, just some, some steps, taking some yeah. steps. But I think those are the two things that usually held women back. You know, the, the belief is huge. Um, believing in just, you know, yourself and this, this, that's the circumstance will work out, believing your intuition, believing the concept, the idea, whatever it is. Um, I think that's a, that's the biggest, that's the biggest one. Yeah. It's a mindset shift, isn't it? And so I'm assuming in your empowering working with these women, um, you mentioned earlier, I mentioned earlier in your bio that you focus on their uniqueness. So do you drive their focus then from being on the self-sabotaging, all the, all the coulda, woulda, shoulda, oh my gosh, all this stuff can go wrong. And it's anxiety Mm -hmm. thinking of what all could go wrong. You're like, but then again, it could all go right. And let's focus on the things that you can control and really kind of shift their mindset to focusing on the perspectives of the things that they do really, really well. And the positive outcomes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that you mentioned uniqueness. Thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. That's for me, that was one of the pivotal moments also when I've, the more I've started hearing me, my voice, Mm -hmm. um, the more I started trusting my voice and the way I show up, the more magical my life has been. 
and is is been in the making. And it started from early manifestation, me being 13 years old, sitting with my sisters and literally saying where we want to live in the globe, in the world. Mm -hmm. And I said, I said, US, even though at the time the my country was completely closed. My mm -hmm. sister said Switzerland. And it started from that manifestation moment. And 16 years later, we all living in the countries we literally said we would. Mm -hmm. uh, so how these things happen, right? Like how, why, and how they happen, how they shift. So if we if we listen and if we if we start understanding how these things work, we start trusting our uniqueness, the way we show yeah. show up, and then really sorting following the opinions or listening to the opinions, sort and really sorting out the advice that we follow, mm -hmm. and really taking that wise judgment, right? Yeah. There's much advice and information today. And so if we just keep absorbing and we lose ourselves, we, if we just follow what we heard, we lose who we are. Yeah. Um, but if we go back to who we really are, like yeah. I was, at some point I was thinking to change my accent, believe it or not. And so when I realized that I don't want to, like, I, I don't want to change my accent. I'm so glad I didn't. But there was a point where, back like I don't know 19 years ago when I just came all the things shaped me who I am and then but we don't realize them at a time we realize them later but it takes you know it's 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 journey it's we have to we have to take we have to live it to understand and so then going back to really who I am and so that's why I think everyone is so unique you know we write this multi author books which is, you know, little stories, 2000 word stories in, in our community. And it's so interesting to me every time if, if she is the first time writing the story, she thinks she doesn't have a story. Mm -hmm. And so that is to me, it's just so interesting how we think that we don't have a story. But when I start asking questions, she's telling me this amazing, absolutely amazing experience she had or, or the, 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 the childhood that she grew up with or some story. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And so this, you know, those kind of things, again, back to like who you are, who you are, who you yeah. truly are, uniqueness and, and the roots that we come from and um, what we believe in and what we stand for. Um, and sometimes I maybe it's it's important to go start from what we mm -hmm. don't like what we we what we want to fight with or what we don't uh, you know maybe fight is a too strong a word but you know what we don't want to accept maybe starting there understanding and then going back to okay what 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 am i about what am I, I love about? that and i and i and we're all so unique and that's what makes us so different and i remember a client saying to me once i was uh in april i was on the cover of insight uh success magazine there's a one behind me on the video. And um, I had said yes to that opportunity for several things, for for promotion, for SEO, for credibility, for a lot of things. And, um, and my client, I mentioned something to her um, about magazines. And she said, well, I don't really know how to say this, but, and I said, well, I don't, under what, what do you want to say? She said, I'm not um, pretty like you are. And I said, I'm not on the front of Sports Illustrated. <laughs> I'm not on the front of the swimsuit edition. You know, I'm not on the front of Cosmopolitan magazine. Like, that's not what this magazine is. It's not about your beauty. Yeah. It's about your brain. Mm -hmm. An Insight magazine for business is about your brain. It's about your brand. It has nothing to do with your beauty. I want you to look from the inside out because yes. you have every right to be on the cover of a magazine. You have every right to share your knowledge and your experience in what you specialize in. Um, and I think we need to get past all that artificial, super, you know, kind of exterior stuff and realize that we are so full of knowledge and wisdom and experience. And because something to us is common, common sense is not somebody else's commonplace. And it yes. is our responsibility to teach them, to share that, mm -hmm. to take them along. And you do that in the Women of the World Network. You created that network for that purpose. Tell us about that network that you created. Yes, uh, Women of the World Network. So we, um, 
It's a community for multinational women in business. And uh, we have women uh, representing from 22 countries today. And this is a mix of women who are members and authors. We just published our third book. And so we attract women who are born in different country, living yeah here now building a business um, and we also have women who are born in this country um, and and grew up in this country but want to connect to the international women um, and so it's a uh, huge diversity yeah. <laughs> accents in the mix um, but yeah supporting uh, minority women is this is what we do in business this is what yeah. we do and um, um and again, that comes, yeah, there's a lot of the things help her build a business. So we provide visibility uh, for her through our podcast. We provide visibility through the books that I mentioned, um, speaking opportunities, networking That's opportunities. Um, we celebrate partnerships every month, some, some sort of a partnership made in the community that we That's celebrate. Great. So everything related to um, really business growth and personal growth. So we have the the personal aspect of it because it's all interconnected, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I am I'm just grateful for for this community. It's 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 like we feed off each other. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, it's a beautiful thing. So yeah. It's wonderful. You know, it's it's why I created Lead Up for Women and then uh, rebranded uh, about a year and a half ago into the Leap community. Um, mm-hmm. And it was for everything that you're talking about is to bring women together. And I love that you do it multinational with several different cultures and represent in 22 countries. You know, mine is mainly nationally um, heavy in uh, Canadian uh, women that are included in that. I always say, oh, you guys are just part of the United States anyway. And they get so mad because <laughs> they're like, no, we're not. I'm like, OK, sorry. You know, I, you guys are just right there over the border. You know, we border each other. But yeah. uh, so so anyway, yeah, we're only represented in a few countries, you know, other than uh, the United States. So I, I I love what you're doing. If you're a woman of multinational and cultural, and you really want to join a network with other women um, that you feel understand you can connect with you. The Women of the World Network is one of the best ways for you to do that. And you can follow them on Instagram, Women of the World Network. So you can follow them on Instagram. Uh, You can also go to lballard.com. What are they going to find at lballard.com, L? Um, what they, what what is it going to find? Where they, yeah, when they come to your website, where do you want them to go? Where where's the best way for them to navigate um, around? Mm-hmm. Um, there are a couple of things. Uh, there is a podcast. Definitely check out if you are a woman in business building a business. There is a Empowered Global Women um, in Business podcast um, that we have. Um, we have also we monthly we have the the uh social events like mm-hmm. online social events and definitely you're welcome to come and join or your listeners uh come and join us um completely yeah. free check us out uh, women of the world network.com has an, an events page where they can register okay. for um for the lbowler.com if anyone listening to this and um you know, having some aha moments on, um, you know, sharing her experiences about how she has built build, building her life and her business as a multinational woman or have questions. I'll be happy to uh, have a uh, 15 minute support call and they can okay. sign up for that on my website. OK, and that they can find that on your website, because I yes. also have abundance for women of the world dot com. Yes. Um, is that for the quick call? Yes. OK. Yes. Wonderful. That yeah. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. I highly recommend that if you are multicultural and you want to connect with L, that you do that directly. I mean, you can reach her at her email, obviously at L at lballard.com. You can go to lballard.com or our website, uh, schedule and book a call with her there. Um, Women of the World Network is it, it's a great community. Uh, for you to check out um, where you're going to feel supported as a woman in business. Uh, As you can hear from Elle and what she's been through and the women that are in that network, if you feel like you really fit and that's a good network for you, I I always, everyone always says, why do you recommend other people go to other communities than your own? And I said, because they're all different and you have to find your tribe. I do not want a female entrepreneur out there floating around in a little dinghy in this huge ocean by herself. I want her to gather on islands, you know, that are like-minded women that fit what she needs at that season of her life. And the Leap community might not be that for her. 
um, and the women of the World Network may be. So I think that's the best thing for us to constantly promote each other and drive women. Our goal and why Elle and I do what we do is for women to be successful. My mission in the world is for women to be proud of what they build and to be financially independent, period. That's yep. it. It's that simple. I want them to be proud and I want them to be financially independent because that creates choices. Mm -hmm. And when we have choices, we have a lot more confidence and self-esteem to make to make decisions. Absolutely. And um, that's my whole mission in life, right? That, it's pretty simple. And I do that through the products that I offer for mm -hmm. women, right? Through masterminds, through the community, through strategically coaching them in their businesses. You know, I don't do life coaching. It's just not me. Um, I have to work women through life because when you're building a business, you work through life. But, you know, sometimes you see find yourself sitting there, right? Elle is a therapist. And, uh, and, uh, and I don't know if I'm qualified for that. So I always say, you know, work with someone like Elle who can help you in that area because that might not be me. You know, I get lit up on numbers and goals and strategy and, um, and scaling, you know, businesses and growth. Like, I love that. That's what I love. And women are like, yeah, but I'm struggling in this other thing over here. And I'm like, I can't help you over there. So at least we know when we're in our lanes, yes. what we do best. Right. And that's, yes. that's what I do best. If you want to get the best out of me, then that's what I do best. Right. So, um, and we have to be, we have to walk the talk and talk the walk and, and be that person. So, you know, something to look out for when you're looking for a mentor or a coach, are they walking the talk and talking the walk and are they living their life exactly the way that they're teaching? Because if they're not run as fast as you can and get away from them, you know, <laughs> if they're not, um, L just real quick before we close up, will you share with everyone your goals? Uh, in ballroom dancing right now because I'm so excited. Ah, well, that's, yes, yes, yes. And so that's why I'm so passionate about. Uh, you see know. her light up. Did you guys see her light up? Like you could hear it in her <laughs> voice. <laughs> yes, I and I believe that's why. Like I love to speak about the free. Um, you know the hashtag free fulfilled fabulous, and it's I'm all about that. The freedom, the financial freedom for women, the fulfilled life, fulfilled life, yeah. um, and really the fabulousness that each woman has about her around her the way she moves and that passion um to have that that passion exercise or, or hobby for me my goal is bronze too right now um i am moving along um but it's really you know for me it's it's a, it's a, it's is an add-on to everything else that i do um in life but it's it's a i think that's why i'm so passionate about the abundance in life for women just because it's a combination of different things for me. And I'm big, big, big on having balance in life between work and just really, truly enjoying and living life, your life, the way you see for yourself. And, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's challenging because it's, you know, I, I was like, Oh, I'm just going to go dance and it looks so easy from outside. Right. And I'm oh, yeah. dancing when in college. So for me, it's a little bit easier still because I know my body remembers, mm -hmm. Moves, but I forgot that you have to think and move. So it's just several parts. You don't just run the treadmill, right? right. So it's several parts, which is really good for you as well, right? To to for the brain to think and for the body to move. Um, but it's several parts of your body working. So it's a lot of concentration and body movement, but I'm enjoying it. I love, okay. I love it. So as um any medals, any awards. So I just started, uh, I went, I just started like a year and a half ago. Um, I mean, I've been uh, slowly growing along the levels. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> but, Do you have any goals to, to receive, like to, to be in a competition or anything or? I would like to be, um, maybe in a couple of years, because I know I need to allocate time. Yeah. Definitely, uh, okay consistently to train for that. Well, we'll check back in with Elle in a couple of yes. years and see what her award <laughs> status is for any championships that she's in for ballroom dancing. That's fun. We always have to remember traveling and dancing or whatever your hobbies may be need to be a big part of your life. They need to be a huge part of your life. We are not here just to work and die. 
to make money. Yeah. Can't take it with you. Up. Yeah. We need yeah. to, we, we, we need, need to, to something to enjoy go the journey. Life. Yeah. Enjoy life. Enjoy the journey. And I, I mean, I'm just as guilty as everybody else being super focused on things. Even when I was doing things I love, like running, I was so focused on the end goal that I didn't enjoy the journey of running until obviously everyone's heard the story. Six years later, my brother-in-law asked me to run a half marathon with him. And I had not been running for six years and I did it on two days notice and wow. had a golf cart take me to my car after because I couldn't walk anymore <laughs> for a little while. Um, but I'll tell you this, it was the best journey I ever had running. It was the funnest Beautiful. that I had ever had in a run. And I got to meet so many people and see so many amazing things. So that really opened my eyes to look at, hey, we need to pay more attention yeah. to the journey of life and enjoy the journey of life because you're not promised tomorrow. And as much mm -hmm. as it's you know, horrible to say it. I've had three people that have surrounded me in either my businesses or my friends or my community that have had young uh, sisters and family members um, get cancer lately. And some of them have been extremely aggressive and they're terminal. Mm -hmm. And and I'll tell you six months ago, they did not know that. Mm hmm. So yeah. life can change in an instant. So what are you going to do with your life today? Or you've been waiting on starting that business. And uh, now you've decided after listening today, you're ready, then contact Elle, right? Become part of her Women of the World Network. Reach out to her at lballard.com. Don't wait because you're not promised tomorrow. So, you know, as my good friend, Julie Jones would say, stop waiting, start living. Uh, we have to really live the life that we desire every day and do the things we want to do. So- yeah just the way it is. Well, Elle, thank you so much for being on today's show. And it was a pleasure having you here. And I just, I want to remind all of our listeners, remember, you're the only you that's ever been. You're the only you that will ever be. You, If you want to overcome barriers, design your life the way you want to live it, contact Elle, decide that you want to move forward, join the Women of the World Network, take action today. You're going to waste your, you're going to waste all your time. This is the time to make memories, to build and make bad choices. I do all the time. I'll make an investment. It was a horrible investment, but at the time yeah. I thought it was a great investment. Yes. And guess what? I always tell my husband, we'll just go make more money. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Leave it in the past, unpack it, let it go. And let's just move forward because you can't stay stuck in the coulda, woulda, shouldas. You just got to move forward and uh, kind of wipe clean what happened in the past. And uh, and if someone tries to, I think if someone tries to anchor you there, let them go too. Don't let anybody anchor you to a past experience that you've forgiven yourself for and moved on. Important Absolutely. for us to know that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right, Elle. Thanks so much, Thank everyone. You. you guys. Oh, it was so great having you here. So today. great. To all of you, remember Bye. until next time, be you and be strong. Bye-bye for now. Thank you for joining us on this journey of self-discovery, where you learned the tools to create a life by design. Remember, you are the only you there is, and you are the only you that will ever be. Be you and be strong, because you are brilliant, and the world needs you at your best. We cannot wait for you to join us again next time.